This is the Central Coast's Anti-Social Network. I swear politics is just ripping apart everything. <laughs> you know, at some point, I always have to tell myself, like, I find myself, like, okay, you can't let this bug you. Just let it go. This will be over very soon. You can't stop, you know, unfriending people on social media and blocking them or whatever. Because some of it, it's just getting so gross and, like, just so in your face all the time. Because I'm like, I'll forget to go back and unblock them. But I don't care what you think. You know, you don't need to put it all See, over social media. You're not going to change our mind. You're letting it rip up so, uh, relationships with you. So I've been blocking people. But I'm like, you got to just let it go. This will be over very soon, in a couple of weeks, and uh, then yeah, we can all move on with to, our lives. Like, people did their thing, and then like whoever you voted for is whoever you voted for, and then that was it. You know, it wasn't. It was. We like, never used to talk you, about. You it. didn't hold the grudge, and then like try to blacklist people based on who they were voting for but i don't know if you heard about this and i'm not trying to black pe- list people that don't agree with me right. i'm trying to blacklist people that are trying to shove their opinion down my throat so, and i don't need to see because they don't agree with i don't you. need to see it so you don't want you just want to hear what you agree, agree with i understand that's how it is and that's how it's worked out with the happy days cast um they got together to do a reunion um and the reunion was uh, a fundraiser for the Wisconsin Democratic Party. Who's still alive from Happy Days? Party. Fonzie is. Fonzie is. Uh, Ron Howard. Ron Howard. Is, is that still, it? Still. Uh, Marion Ross and Anson Williams. Pot- Marion Ross? Yeah, the mom. She's and, still alive? Potsy is still alive. Oh, wow. Okay. And Scott Baio is still alive. Um, Who did Scott Baio play? Chachi. Oh, okay. See, I didn't watch the shows. That was pre Jeremy. Now, you remember back in 2016 that Scott Baio uh, was a speaker at the Republican National Convention. Um, and uh, he was he was asked not to come, even despite being a, hmm, a surviving member of the cast of Happy Days. Um, they asked John Stamos to play Chachi instead of inviting the guy that played Chachi. Scott Bale to the thing because they figured their their excuse was you know well we figured he didn't want to have anything to do with the Wisconsin Democratic Party because he spoke at the Republican National Convention in 2016 four years ago they didn't even offer it they didn't even start a conversation he uh, they just went and got John John Stamos is a waste he tweeted he said this great is, hair but a waste this is what Hollywood has come to huh shameful. Hashtag liberals are desperate. Then he added, uh, shouldn't John Samos be taking care of Aunt Becky? In a reference to Lori Laughlin's college admission scandals. Um, yeah, Scott Bale's not happy. I don't know if he's not happy because they're doing it to raise funds for the Democratic Party in Wisconsin, or he's not happy because he was not invited. I don't know. But Chachi? Chachi's a political thing? The Chachi is a political pawn in uh, in American politics now? I know. Jesus! How far are we going to drill down with this thing? I don't know, but we only have a couple weeks left. Entertainment's this is, just entertainment, man. This is when it's going to get real ugly, no, by the way. This is when I'm going to crawl in my hole and not, <laughs> not pay attention. This is when I'm going to dig deep into fantasy football because it is the welcome distraction in my life. Yeah, two weeks. We have two, little less than two weeks left to go. Uh, we've got the, the final, uh, debate happening tonight. Chachi. Are you going to watch the debate to see how the, mu- the mute? No, the mu- I told you, I'm going into the hole. Wait, you're not going to see how the mute, the, 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 the mic muted became thing? a political pawn? I'm out. I'm I got it. I got to at least watch the first. I cast my vote. I'm done. I don't know. 10 minutes to see how this mic muting I'm thing out. goes. I'm out. Unless I'm Scott Bale's the one muting the mic, I'm out. <laughs> Chachi. Chachi. I want Chachi Come in on. control. I want Chachi as a moderator for this thing. You'll still be blown away. Because that number is actually higher. Really? 97% of the late night talk show jokes were about Donald Trump. You are fake news. 97%. They broke it down by numbers. There was a total of, I can do the math here real quick, 469 jokes that were about presidential candidates. 14 of those 
were about Joe Biden, leaving 455 of them about Donald Trump. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of material there. The guy's constantly putting himself out there to where he's... And Joe Biden is just... It's very boring. I don't even know what you would... uh, I mean, yeah, I know there's the the dementia thing. There's... um, Sleepy Joe. I mean, I know that stuff I hear Trump say, so I don't know what the night, I don't know what the jokes are from the late night guys. I know he stutters. Who was it? There was uh, somebody the other day that was uh, doing a speech and they were making fun of Biden and how he kind of stutters a little bit. But I thought, well, that's not even that funny, but maybe it was. I didn't see it. Now you're like, okay, I get that. But Trump, I mean, come on. You were I saw him dancing the other day. He was in Delaware and he was on stage and he was literally doing a shuffle. <laughs> Of the, uh, and he's really living it up since the COVID. Yeah, I know. Since he doesn't have COVID, I feel great. I feel better than I felt my whole life. And he's dancing and he's blowing kisses. And oh my God. New, it's, new, I mean, new. it's, it's easy. I, you know, I, I, it's I gotta a new watch. On life. I gotta watch. I recorded Saturday Night Live the last two weeks. I have not had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, because I'm not up that late. I always fall asleep before it actually comes on, which I know sounds lame, but that's just because of the schedule. But I want to watch that. I I, I got to see what they're doing because it's got to be pretty funny. Um, go back four years ago. What do you think the split was? Because this is a 97 to 3. Oh, but it was Hillary. This is a 97 to 3 split. Okay. What did they call her back then? Killary? Um, I bet it was still heavy Donald Trump, but I was like 60-40 Donald. It was seventy-eight twenty-two. Oh, okay. Uh, Donald ninety. Well, because you got to realize all these people too. They're liberals. They're working in Hollywood. These young people. They're de- they're not conservatives. They're not Republicans. So they probably get a more of a kick. I would think. This is my opinion. Out of you know tearing down uh, the guy. You know the the conservative candidate. The Republican. That's not their guy. But at the same time, they realize that you know there's still funny jokes that could be told the other way. The problem is Hillary. There was stuff there. I mean, think about her past. Think about her marriage. Think about you know everything about her, her. demeanor. Her demeanor. <laughs> the looks. It's so funny. They always talked about uh, when Trump stood behind her and he was giving her a glare. I'm like, God, she's got way worse glares than that. Like that woman. Holy cow. But so yeah. But it, it doesn't surprise me uh, either way that they would they would do that. But 97 percent on Donald Trump. That is crazy. And I don't, I'm not watching those shows because I go to bed. And uh, Kim, I like Kimmel. I, I think out of, them, out of the three of them, I would watch Kimmel. I don't find What's-His-Face funny at all. I like... Um, Who's What's-His-Face? St- Gobert. Stephen Gobert? No, that's not even his name. It's Colbert. Colbert, whatever his name is, yeah. Apparently you don't like him. I liked him as, as the role he played back in the day on the Comedy Central. On The uh, Daily Show? On The Daily Show. I liked his role there. Uh, when he was a correspondent, but uh, I've I, I've tried to sit down and watch some interviews and things. I just don't find him that entertaining. I don't know why they don't put Conan there. Conan, Conan's a funny guy. Conan, who knows? Maybe it's political. Tommy Lee is ready to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I get, you know, Nikki's like, you know what? There's a bunch of people that are in there that don't really, he doesn't agree with. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I might not agree with that either, but you know what, at the end of the day for me, dude, it would be an honor regardless, because there is a bunch of people that deserve to be there and I wouldn't kick it out of bed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the crew? I feel like, uh, they're not taken as serious as other rock acts from the eighties that were just as successful, if not less successful than Motley Crue. Yeah. But are they in the rock and roll hall of fame? What are you talking about? Like, Guns what's and, it have to be? Twenty five years? Guns and Roses? Yeah, Guns and Roses. I think I just feel like Guns and Roses. There's more substance there. And then when you draw this comparison to the era in which you're in, like, it feels like Motley Crue draws the comparison of Guns and Roses, where there's lots of substance, and Poison, where there's less substance than Motley Crue. <laughs> so they fall somewhere in the middle. And if somebody is there representing your genre. That you can be forgotten because they're like, oh, uh, every time it comes around, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is like, oh, we got Guns N' Roses. We don't need Motley Crue. You know, you know, Motley's always been that that kind of band that just a won't go away and B is just, you know, with some of those kind of people, it's always been we've always butted heads with that kind of stuff. You know, people just sometimes don't think that the, we're the real deal, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Or just I don't know what their deal is. My thing, 
is if the band is popular, they sold a lot of out. I mean, what does it take to be into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? What is the criteria? Now, I know it's a panel of people, and I don't know the the, the listener uh, vote is very very small, like one percent. The fan vote. The fan vote, yeah, the listener fan vote. So, I mean, the, the people that listen to the music and vote because they're fans, not because they're a record label or they're, you know, yeah, it counts a, like a it was media one, person or one something. vote um, uh, on a panel of like 30 different votes, and that vote counts as one. How do we decide? I mean, because if you're successful and you're good and you've sold the out, I mean, how do you, how do you decide who should be in and who shouldn't be in? I've got to imagine you've got to think of, you know, how many albums did they sell? How many albums did they make? I don't uh, think that comes into consideration, really. You know, how popular were they? Uh, how many, What was their tour like? How many fans showed up? To me, that's who decides to go. Well, I mean, how do you decide? Well, that's how you would do it if you ran the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But, I mean, there's been, arguably, there's a lot of bands in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that have not sold as many units or um, concert tickets as, 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 Motley, as Crew. Motley Crew. I mean, it's just, it's something I don't think you can get away from, but they're, their contribution to rock and roll is much greater because of what? The because they, they were sing. a better guitar player, maybe a better drummer, shaped, a better maybe singer. They shaped the way that music uh, was was changed, you know, in their in their era. When I say give me give me rock bands out of the '80s that should be included into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, how does Motley Crue not? Be, how are they not on that list? They were, they were one of the biggest rock groups out of the '80s. I'm, I'm I'm I agree that they belong in there. Okay, but. I don't know if it's a priority. My thing is, what does it take to become a Hall of Famer? All right, does it is it is it a number one that you were one of the greatest at what you did? Yes, probably. Vote, right, votes from the board. Hall Why when you look at stats when you talk about the Rock and Roll? This Hall is of the fame. problem with Hall of Fames is you can't quantify it, and maybe some of it is political. Who knows? I mean, and I'm not talking political. So many in the groups Democratic, that came out of the Republican '80s that sense. don't belong in the Hall of Fame. But Motley Crue pro- definitely does. Look what they were able to do. They created a huge sound, a huge following. Is NWA in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Is NWA in the ho- Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I heard you the first time. You don't have to repeat it. I don't have the. I don't have that in front I of me. I think they. Yeah, they performed. They were in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They are there. Um, is that a, a, a band that deserves to be? In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Because their contributions to music were different than everything else that was out at that time and from the same genre that Motley Crue was playing. Well, that's like saying Eminem belongs in because he's a white guy that raps. No, but does Eminem belong in because he's a rapper? But it's so different. His rapping was so different than the rapping that was going on at the time. Who were the pioneers of the sound? Motley Crue, did they pioneer the sound of hair rock, of glam metal? No, they didn't. Other bands came along and did it before them. That's why I believe that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame shuns Motley Crue. Wow. I just, I think that they're like, okay, seven bands came along before them that sounded exactly like them. So that means Nirvana, the sound that they created, they should obviously go in, but the Foo Fighters and Alice in Chains and uh, Soundgarden and Stone Temple Pilots, they shouldn't even be considered because they didn't create that sound. That's possibly. It's a little elitist, I think. Well, that, and that's what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame specializes in. Madonna's being, in the freaking Hall of Fame. The problem Jackson. you have with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is that you want to quantify Michael it. Michael Jackson And you can't it. quantify the opinions of people on a board. That's just the way it is. You can't, you can't get around it. And you, could, you could talk about it all you want, but you're never going to change I'm, it. I'm talking about your opinion. I believe that Motley Crue does deserve a spot in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I understand why they don't have one, and that's because... There was a lot of bands that sounded like them during that time.